Hello, welcome to Honest Trailer Commentaries, the show <laughs> where we talk about that other show, and then you come watch this show. I'm Spencer J. Gilbert, Lon, Joe, Dan. Today we're talking about Shazam! Shazam! Uh, Shazam! <laughs> Shazam! Uh, if you haven't seen this show before, we're going to talk about our thought process behind the last trailer. Uh, we're going to watch it all together and add our thoughts. And then if you stick around to the end, you'll get some uh, cut jokes, some deleted scenes, and a clue to next week's Honest Trailer. Mm. Well uh, now, we're already off to a, a great start uh, after moving this to uh, uh, the Screen Junkies <laughs> channel because we said that we were going to do it on Wednesday so that we could, like, Respond to your comments and your questions, and like really interact. You know, it's YouTube. Like, let's talk to the audience. No, no, we're uh, we're at Comic Con now. So uh, I guess Dan, maybe you'll play the part of a whiny fan, and uh, oh and Joe, you can play the part of uh, someone who like is really complimentary, uh, and yeah. we'll just respond to your comments and questions. Okay, How, how's that good. sound? I'll do yeah. my best. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> no one cares what you guys think. But I mean, we will be yeah. back. To I've the... always enjoyed you, but respectfully. Shut up! <laughs> I already pointed out all the problems with the trailer while we were making. It, yeah. Maybe I'll Fair. find another one and I'll point it. Yeah. Out. Um, we will be back to pretending to listen to you next week. Uh, Shazam is a film that I enjoyed quite a bit. I yeah. like this movie a lot. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a really good movie. Discuss. <laughs> I was dead. I was dead wrong on Shazam. I have to say, when I first saw it, it was right before it came out. Luckily, I got a chance to see it before it came out, and I came out of the screen and I was like, "This movie is going to make." so much money. I was like, this movie is gonna mm. bridge between <laughs> Captain Marvel and Avengers. It is gonna suck up every dollar. No. 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 It didn't. I don't I like it a lot. I guess I don't, I don't know if it's it was fun. timing or just it's it's I like I really like this movie and it, it did the worst out of all the DC EU movies. So did it so challenge I know. too many expectations as to what I guess people expect a DC movie to be at this point? I mean, not I, after Aquaman and Wonder Woman. Well, yeah, but I, I do also remember with this one, like when the first like set shots of Zach Levi leaked online, everyone's like, "Oh, what in the hell? He's wearing like a dumb '90s Captain America styrofoam muscles." Like people were, people yeah, were yeah. so mad. I think the fact that they they mixed in a lot of comedy maybe gave people some hesitation. It was promoted so much as a comedy. I also just think it's a character that is well outside the traditional. Justice League DC lineup that Warner Brothers tends to go back to all the time. Yeah, but like mm -hmm. so was Guardians of the Galaxy or whatever, yeah. and people showed up for that. By then, though, Marvel had already done a lot of the legwork of like trust yeah. us, like the, these Marvel, the you're Marvel, gonna like it even if you don't know it. Yeah. And I don't know the if, Marvel Mortal Engine was already cranking yeah. across our well, broken continent. What does DC continent? have to do for us to trust us again? I trust them at this point. I'm back on. Oh, all right. I mean, yeah. I, I like. Yeah. I will see a movie now, assuming it's going to be above average. <laughs> so I mean, that, look, I, really, that I can vow. I both saw and really like this movie, so you don't argue with me. I'm just like, I, I do think that there's something about like Shazam as a character doesn't get people as excited to go to the theater. It's like, yeah, I think Aquaman. maybe some people came to expect from a DC movie a little extra edge because mm. even James uh, uh, Aquaman, uh, James Wan like gave that like a horror, like. Edge like yeah, it was like, like in the sharp. trench, and, and this had we talk about it. This, this had some edge to it, but I don't I don't think maybe it was perceived as having that edge, and people thought like, well, if I want to go see a jokey superhero movie, there's a lot of them out there, so maybe I can skip. Yeah, well, there's one. there's little to no darkness in it, maybe uh, visually, but like thematically, yeah. it's really about like family and you know yeah. surrogate parents I mean, who love also, you just as much it may have also been the fact that it's centered on kids and like yeah. a lot of dc fans are otherwise cynical about i don't want to go see a kids movie and like did they not make it a, i want to see a grown-up movie i want to see a, movie a about gritty, aquaman. dark adult <laughs> movie about aquaman i'm a big kid i want to see a big guy punch aliens yeah. you know what i mean like they, the dc tends to market the grit and the darkness yeah. a bit more and i think mm -hmm. that they've they've cultivated that fan base and yeah. this movie was you know it's hard more, to more stay away from bright. making a kids movie about shazam though you know no right you can't you about a little a kid boy. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I liked it. Unless you want to go full injustice and he's there snapping it's, necks and nah, I, I want yeah. Marvel to compete with this by going full old school Fantastic Four cartoon and having a little kid that turns into the thing by putting on a ring. I no. think that's, that's yeah. Yeah. okay. And yeah. the floating robot. Yes, that is what I want for my Fantastic <laughs> Four to compete Every with Shazam. movie should have that. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. Fair uh, let's watch the honest trailer for Shazam and we'll try to remember to say pause yes. when we have something to because say. Because it's not that they want to hear the trailer, it's that they can't hear us. Oh, we we're taking now. that on board. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Comment received.
from the studio that's gone from doom and gloom to fins and grins comes a fun-filled ride for the kid inside everyone. Just maybe not actual kids. Kill the little girl. <laughs> Pause. And I don't really have anything to say. I just thought we should pause. <laughs> no, I, I, I heard this as a criticism, of, again, explaining perhaps why it didn't make as much, is that a lot of people felt that it may have been aimed towards kids, but was too scary for kids. No, this is a good toughen you up kids movie. Uh, I agree. Like the Goonies. Yeah. I yeah. agree, but it's it's there are very clear lines of demarcation drawn a lot now. That's like, fair. this is movies just for kids. This movie's, and I think a lot of people are like, I don't want to take my kids t to this if they're going to be scared. Yeah, one thing that came out after this open, I saw a lot of comments on social media that were like, there was no warning. They made it look like it was good for kids, and then it's super scary, and my kids were scared, but it was PG-13. But I that feel wouldn't like affect that's the, the box. Warning. Office. Oh yeah, PG thirteen is the warning. Like, like to me, that is the warning. That like, yeah, it's gonna be a little bit dark. Maybe older kids, you know. They'll drop one f bomb. Yeah, a monster's yeah. gonna bite a head. Yeah. yeah, like they did in my day. Yeah, in kids movies. Yeah, I mean, we also like I came of age in the eighties when kids movies were just like oh, more messed Hollywood up. Just was generally to traumatize all yeah, of us. Like, when we were growing up. Yeah. So yeah, I I didn't. It was like the middle ages. Like you were an adult at thirteen. <laughs> like you were like here's your sword yeah. or whatever and, and get out of the. Yeah, you want you want to see RoboCop, you little bastard? <laughs> like oh, that was no. it was when I was a scene. kid. Yeah, I remember in in this movie the scene where the bullies uh, beat up his friend and then he comes to the rescue and hits. They were him with the a heroes crutch. in yeah. the eighties. Oh no, it just he never showed up with the crutch. He just kept kicking him for like twelve minutes. <laughs> hey, little snot nosed punk, you want to see the movie about the white fluffy dragon? We're gonna kill a horse. <laughs> That's your price. Yeah, yeah. The horse is gonna die. We paid the iron price. <laughs> we paid the iron price for our kids' entertainment. Remember Pete's yeah. Dragon, where they were gonna eat the kid yeah. for the whole first yeah, exactly. hour? Yeah. I mean, cannibal orphan. That's yeah. your price for animated dragons. That's yep. how you get this. So exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's like maybe it's for the best. Yeah. Let's keep watching. <laughs> Meet Billy Batson. He's got the street smarts of Bart Simpson and the street wear of Tyrone Biggums. I'm just going to pause, pause right here. Pause. One, that's a brilliant joke that Spencer wrote that I want to call attention to. That is one of the best catches yeah. of all time, Spencer. I got to thank um, our uh, super fan, Dizzle, who uh, dresses up like Tyrone Biggums yes, a yeah. couple times that's right. for, for Comic-Con. I was like, he looks like Dizzle. And I was like, wait a second, Dizzle is doing cosplay as Tyrone Biggums. He's dressed up like Tyrone Biggums. Yeah. Um, I mean, what, what an I eye. Even down so, to the color, yeah. the color, it's like switched. It's yeah. like the red cap and the black <laughs> uh, hoodie with the black hoodie and the red. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. like Just the fact that he says Shazam. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's perfect. After drinking Red Balls. It's got to be on, I wish we could ask David, if I could ask David Sandberg, one question is like, was that on purpose? Or the was costume that, yeah. designer, yeah. Yeah. Like, it, uh, to, to come up with a pull like that, I don't know. Is, is amazing, but yeah. also the the other thing I wanted to say here is that we we didn't we didn't get to play with this in the trailer, but it's something that kind of bugged me. The movie can't decide if Billy Batson is like really streetwise or like kind of an idiot who can't handle himself. Mm -hmm. Like the first half, he's like he's he's outsmarting the cops. He's like the ultimate street rat. I got it's all wired, and then later he like can't come up with like I was at the business office. Like he's like a moron. <laughs> he's like a kid. He's learning the ropes. I guess he's okay. that one Han Solo. All yeah. comedy characters have to be inconsistent, or they wouldn't be funny. Yes. Um, I and he's, I was going to bring kids up in the trench coat. Yeah, yeah that yeah. he is. He should thank his lucky stars. He was born Lily White because <laughs> this guy starts the yeah. movie by tricking some cops into a into a convenience store or something, and then closing the security grate on them and stealing the cop car. Yeah. And then like a scene later, the cop pulls up. He's like, "You, you yeah. took my meatball sandwich, Billy." Really? Like, <laughs> and like in Philly, like not in like <laughs> yeah. some nice summer, like in Philly, downtown Philadelphia. Yeah. David, yeah. David Sandberg did a great video about like the difficulties of making movies, yes, and, uh, really good and, video. and rightfully so. And we'll 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 share the we'll share the blame on this taking of videos like the ones that we produced the task for sometimes not taking into account how difficult filmmaking can be and then mm. pointing out mistakes and stuff. But one thing that he said was like sometimes in these like analysis videos they'll give credit to directors for like these deep setup things and like subtle messages that are only there because they just had they couldn't get two actors yeah. on the set. Right. Look it up if you can't find it. It's but, really like, awesome. It's it's really that's yeah. one of the, that's what I wonder if that's the example of what we're doing. Like, are we giving David Sandberg and the costume department like credit for an amazing deep cut Chappelle show reference, or was it just they were the two that was the that jacket, the they gave him a hoodie, a coat, and yeah. a and a wolf. Yeah, hat. the last night right before they rolled action, someone was like, "Oh, he'd have a coat. It's cold." Yeah, and yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I was so way. proud to be there when you had your coffee cup drop moment. 
uh, yeah. and watch you have that realization in real time. We should now go back and see, treat. like, it, does Shazam look like Rick James? Like, who knows? Who yeah. knows how deep this goes? Are there other <laughs> Chappelle show characters yeah. that uh, that they dress other uh, characters in the movie? Like that yeah. caterpillar's yeah. like, after we defeat Shazam, I'll take you back to my house and make you pancakes. <laughs> are the are the uh, the extras in one scene dressed like the player haters ball? Uh, we just don't, <laughs> we just don't see it. They're all drinking uh, banana cognacs yes. at the Gentleman's Club. Good yeah. stuff. All right, keep going. Tyrone Biggums. Shazam! And Billy gets lured into a cave by an old man who claims to be a wizard, which, to be clear, kids, is never a good idea. All right, sorry, pause again. Uh, why do they all have to be children that he's... No, they, to his cave. They weren't. He were, couldn't be like, you're a grown man. You seem like a good guy. You've proven children? yourself. So, so it, was, it was Mark Strong in the beginning. Yeah, and, right. then it was, and then it was. But when they're showing the montage of people, did they just. No, that lady was an adult when it yeah, happened to her. That's true. Oh, okay. Yeah, it wasn't all children. That right. somehow makes it less cool. <laughs> wait, it's, <laughs> it cool, even it's cool if he's only targeting children. Well, wait, but <laughs> it's cool. It, it's, it's somewhat uh, excusable if it has to be kids, and so he really has no choice. But if he could target anybody and he just chooses to target kids more, that's almost. Almost like worse. He, mm. to be fair to the wizard, he's just, <laughs> he's casting a spell, and the spell is bring. I don't think he's doing oh, the selecting. Blade. Oh the yeah, the spell yeah. is yeah. bringing staff people to I his cave. The staff chose the boy. <laughs> it's, listen, the, the the staff is bringing. The staff's the connection. He's, Spoken he, like a true he's defense just, attorney. Lot. He's, he's the Dershowitz, and the staff is the Epstein. Okay. In this analogy. All right, let's keep going. Let's uh, let's just play. <laughs> we had to make that joke. Yes. <laughs> Which, to be clear, kids, the movie makes a good idea. Lay your hands on my staff. He'll become one of DC's Pause. Oh. Why didn't they just cast a really old man to be a wizard? Like, why did they age up Jaiman Hunter? I think yeah, Jaiman yeah, Hunter's I mean, got to be in your comic book movie. Yeah. That's yeah. a rule now. I mean, yeah. I guess, but he is eternally, he eternally looks in his mid-30s, and yeah. just putting a Halloween store... Merlin beard on him. It's weird to me. It like, is a bushy beard. <laughs> or just don't make him look like a Merlin and just put a robe on him and he's good. But he's got to be old. Yeah. He's got to be old and he's got to be a wizard. But days. he doesn't have to be a. I agree with Joe. He doesn't have to be a Gandalf style wizard. That's a choice that they've made. He could be any kind of old wizard. They've opted for that it's Dumbledore esque. <laughs> Yeah. They had Ian McKellen. <laughs> he dropped out. Uh, Jaiman Huntsu was like in town. I mean, they were already on the set of a different comic book movie. It was like, I'll be right there. Yep. The, you know, and again, like hearkening back to the director's video, that he might have been doing some other project. It was like, you can't touch the hair and the beard. Yeah. True. You think like his real hair? <laughs> DC, DC has experience with this. It was like Henry Cavill. Jaiman Huntsu had CGI out all a that. long <laughs> hair and beard already grown out. He's like, I'll play the wizard, but I can't touch this. He grew this out for Santa Claus 4, and they weren't done shooting yet. He's like, I can't. That's what it is. McQuarrie will kick my ass. They learned not to CGI it out, so there you go. There you go. All right, fair. Keep going. The staff made him look like that. One of DC's classic characters, Captain Marvel. Sorry, sorry. You know, he used to be called Captain Marvel in the 70s, but DC... Oh, pause. Pause. Okay. So because we're recording this early, we still have a couple little nitpicks and lines and stuff we're waiting for to get from John Bailey. So that line will be different in the trailer that you get because we're trying to avoid people criticizing us. The intent of the line is that they switch the name from Captain Marvel to Shazam in the 70s, but the way it's phrased makes it seem like he's a character from the 70s. Right. That they only called him that in yeah. the 70s, right. and that we would then open ourselves up to people saying, like, well, actually, right. he was known as Captain, which we know, but it was a very, uh, it was very improper, and poorly worded, poorly I guess. Worded. And, opened ourselves and when up someone's wrong on the internet, I don't know, what's the nerd version of the bat signal? Like, <laughs> a bag of hot Cheetos appears in the sky, and like a horde, like a 28 days later horde just yeah. tumbles over the, each other yeah. to tell us we're wrong. We don't need the Fawcett <laughs> Comics community coming uh, for yeah. us, guys, please. The Fawcetteers would have been so <laughs> upset by that that sort of uh, vague wording that yeah. we just chose to proactively yeah. change it. So that will be different in the version that you see. Yeah. That, Enjoy. That yeah. Keep going. Used to be called Captain Marvel in the 70s, but DC changed it to Shazam. That's Kazam. Common mistake. I mean the guy obsessed with being worthy and lightning. No, the street rat who gets wish fulfillment powers. Wish fulfillment? Three wishes to be exact. <sighs> okay. It's the one where Chuck flosses. <laughs> floss. Yeah, Dan Floss. Uh, we're going to pause the floss, right? Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> I'm going to floss this fact okay. into your gums of truth. Um, <laughs> 
Uh, we we, uh, we again because we try to be very careful. We, we 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 try not to make mistakes, but we kept having to correct ourselves that Billy was not an orphan. Right. right. Yes. We kept calling him an orphan. We said yeah. that uh, he's orphan, living parents. He's an orphan who got wish fulfillment powers, but he's not an orphan. Yeah. His mother is alive. His father, I think, was alive. His father's in jail. He's in jail, and so we would have been incorrect if we kept referring to him as an orphan. I was so going to bring this up later careful. when we talk about the mom abandoning him, but this movie does not reflect kindly on the Philadelphia Police Department because they find an abandoned boy at a carnival. His mother is 12 feet away. And, uh, and I imagine the conversation went something like, Hello, boy. Uh, what's your name? Hello, Where's boy. your mother? <laughs> Bring me a goose, boy. <laughs> the today, fact Chris, I thought he called him this. boy. <laughs> today, Chris. Hey, what's up, boy? I don't know what a Philadelphia accent yeah, he sounds has like. a farthing. Uh, uh, why did they never go to the mom or dad's house to be like, we found your boy? Because <laughs> he didn't know his address, Spencer. You don't Parents need to know. Teach your kid their address. They don't no, not if to. you want to abandon them at a Unless carnival, then don't them teach them your address. I'm just saying, that was some very shoddy police work on not finding <laughs> either of this boy's living parents after he was dropped off at a carnival. You I think she was ready to on the go. news. Like yeah. Somebody might have called and like, hey, that's my sister's kid. Now, yeah. see, I think I think she was ready to boogie like way before then. Like <laughs> she, she had, had a go um, bag. She was, yeah, she had a go bag. She was a block away in Philadelphia, right? But wait, I... No, but she, it, just in case, it didn't matter if it was the carnival or a grocery store or whatever. She's just, like, at a moment, she was notice, looking she for was a spot. Ready. She yeah. looking yeah. for the out. Well, yeah. but I... Is New that, identity. It's possible that she had kind of given him, like, they, that they had located her over the years, but that she just didn't want Billy back or he couldn't go back to her, because it doesn't... It seems like the social worker kind of knows the story and is just like, look, maybe you should just go with a foster family kid. I'm yeah. going to give it to you straight. Yeah, at that point. Yeah, that's true. Maybe. Also, a lot know. of the police were busy because Bruce Willis was being drowned in a puddle. Like, <laughs> that is pretty close by. <laughs> Philadelphia's <laughs> superhero scene. Philadelphia. Yeah. Pretty yeah. Really superhero intense weapons. couple of weeks for them. <laughs> yeah. They're building up to the shared universe mm -hmm. where Aww. Shazam <laughs> instantly crushes uh, uh, Bruce Willis to death. Yeah, Aww. I can't wait till he drowns Just the rock in a shallow <laughs> puddle. Uh, flings Mr. Glass the, into the atmosphere one-handed. The Kazam joke came from, I have lived my life convinced that Shaquille O'Neal played Shazam in the 90s. Oh, oh really? And yeah. I, I have always thought that. Different film. And it was clearly it was slightly it was, differently. It was obviously Kazam. Sinbad. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you getting this from? Uh, yeah. All right, keep going. Gather round for a heartwarming tale that out families Fast and the Furious. How dare you? <laughs> finding family. You know, me time could also be construed as pushing away his family. If a superhero can't save his family, he's not much of a hero. Thank you for this family. You don't turn your back on them. <laughs> We're in a change of pace from Marvel's constant daddy issues. Bruce we get another Bruce installment of DC's Sad Mom Parade. A lot of sad moms in DC. Oh, man. If you choose to leave, you may never return. I'm sorry I never told you. I felt shame. And we didn't even include Save Martha. Nope. Didn't have to. <laughs> that was not a really good time for me. Uh, uh, Alex, actually, we should, because oftentimes the conversation will be, how could you not include... X. Right, and okay. I think the one that people would ask is, how could you not put Save Martha in that? And that's really just a, this goes to editing sensibilities. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just a rhythm thing of just like, every one of those clips had a rhythm, which is like, mom, hero, mom, hero, mm -hmm. mom, hero, the Watchmen, because we talk about Watchmen. Mm -hmm. It's a DC adaptation, yeah. even though it's not DCEU. Save Martha was just, it broke the flow. There's no so mom in the clip. It's two men it's too, growling. It, it, it just felt. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, I mean, we've mined it, and they've we, had some. Who hasn't mined that? But aside yet? from Say Martha, there are some conversations she's had with her son that are on the grimmer side of like, maybe you shouldn't save people. Yeah. Maybe yeah. They don't know just, you, squat yeah. or whatever. We but, just feel like the man. This, we make a Superman joke later. Yes. The yeah. Man, I, steel jokes have been mined by us. Mm -hmm. And others to death. It's yep. like let's let no one talks about Watchmen so much anymore. Let's throw in a Watchmen. Ooh, you want a dark mom story? Woof. Yeah. Uh, the, the darkest, yeah. the darkest mom timeline. <laughs> but I'm sure many will say. But it, it we're safe, Martha. Yeah, and it is interesting though that like Marvel's go-to is you have a, a distant, abandoned, or abusive father. Mm. DC have a distant, abusive, or abandoned mother. Yeah, someone should look into that. Interesting. Yeah. Anyways, mm. keep going. There you go. Not a really good time. As Billy learns that family isn't about who abandoned you at a carnival on a whim, it's about right the people you're forced to live with who love you because you're constantly saving their asses from being killed. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey, pause. We can talk about like his family, his sidekick gets a character, gets development, but the whole, all the other foster friends are just, it's like, 
I'm this. They're the most I'm that, one note. I'm of, this, yeah. and we're all in peril. I yeah. like video games. <laughs> I'm cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's. I mean, I, I, you know, I feel like some of it is laying the groundwork for. Well, in future movies, we would get <laughs> more of that side of things, and I think a lot of it is about the third act twist that you gotta you gotta lay the groundwork yeah. for that. Plus, sure. it's to, to establish uh, eyeball eyeball man. And Shazam, and the, the whole mythology mm-hmm. around being a wizard, Very and angry Billy Caterpillar. <laughs> Not every supporting character can be the sea captain from Raiders of the Lost Ark, where you're immediately like, man, in three lines, they really nailed that bad. Yeah, are you thinking of but, Zach Sten's great Twitter thread about this? Yeah, that yeah. was really fun. He did a real, just real quick, because it was really good, look it up. Uh, he talked about how very quickly Spielberg and Lucas managed to give you such rich, detailed lives for all of Indiana Jones supporting characters. Like all these guys, like Jock and sure. Sala, who show up for like one scene, but it all feels like they have such rich backstories. And that's, it's so hard to do. It seems, those movies make it feel effortless. But when you see something like this, you realize when you've only got a few moments with the character, it's really hard to you give them. You gotta fall back on cliche. Yeah, it's really cause... hard to give them a yep. whole lived in realistic fleshed out backstory. Yep. I want to know the backstory of those parents where they're like, we want one of each type of child. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that if they got a second Asian kid, they'd be like, no, 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 no. no. We have to complete the <laughs> yeah, set. They're like Pokemon trainers. We're, like there's something weird going we're on. I know they seem nice ad. on the surface, but uh, yeah. I thought that that's where the movie was going to go before he's like, I'm just screwing with you. And he was like, they seem nice, but they're awful. I was like, Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Where are we going? The yeah. villains in the movie are just the Shazam's <laughs> foster parents. Let's <laughs> save it for the sequel. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Come on, come on. But Shazam will have to fight more than just the overburdened foster care system. He's up against Dr. Sivana, a veteran character actor out for revenge on DC for casting him as Sinestro in Green Oof, Lantern. Forgot about that. Watch him unleash the power of the seven deadly sins, each its own representation of a different human failing with unique powers that actually, Venom. no, never mind. They're almost <laughs> kind of great blobs who just eat people. Man, The Rock cannot get here fast enough. Does the yeah. next one really have to be about the very angry caterpillar? The seven realms are about to be ours. <laughs> pause. 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 <laughs> so, I, when I saw this in the theater, it, 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 I saw it twice, and yeah. there's literally like the same reaction in both theaters, which is like 99% of the people in the theater going like, what is that? Huh? Yeah. And then like, yeah, no. <laughs> and that person was a liar. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't know if <laughs> anybody. There was one person that knew. And I don't know if anybody in my screening. A lot of us were like Brainiac, but he's put himself into a worm. <laughs> <laughs> that was the leading theory when I and I saw it in a room full of critics. Like I didn't even see it in like normies. Yeah, normies. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, like regular, regular civilian movie goes. Yeah, I had no idea what that what that was. No, and if it, if you go Mr. 0 for 4 Mind. at this table, I mean, just look at us. Yeah, <laughs> you goof. Although it Actually, does remind me of yeah. when we saw Avengers. That was the reaction for Thanos. That's true. And look at where yeah. Thanos, Thanos is was now. at the cusp of my understanding. Where I was like, oh, that's Thanos. Thanos. Yeah, but no way am I getting cat- the caterpillar. <laughs> yeah. I, what's amazing is if you look into it, a, there are a lot of references to the Monster Society of Evil in the movie, which is Mr. Mind the Caterpillar's like evil group. Like the Crocodile Men yeah. are also part of the. Monster. Uh, Oh, that evil. Evil. Um, yeah, so and Dr. Savannah later joins it. So like they're definitely leading into Shazam's Rogues Gallery. People just don't know. But who what's they weird are, is right? I thought it was a done deal that The Rock is gonna get his solo movie. Yeah, as, I mean they even set it up in this one where they're like, We picked a previous champion, but he failed us. I think that's okay. supposed to be okay. the rock. Right. Got it. And then the caterpillar. And maybe they'll, I mean, I think it, it's probably going to be a, like, Shazam and Black Adam start fighting and then they, they become friends. It's on a whiteboard somewhere else. in yeah. Burbank. Like, yeah. <laughs> you meet Cochise. At first you think he's a terrible guy. Like, yeah. they're doing that thing. Right, keep going. What? The Rock can't make friends with so all of his cute. cinematic enemies. <laughs> he just can't. Yeah. Sorry. Continue. Here along, as DC finally cracks the code on making a heartwarming, fun, inspiring movie about an invincible strong man, a superman, if you will, <laughs> that gives kids everything they dream of. No, not turning into a 38-year-old in a styrofoam muscle suit. No, not terrorizing the movies he worked to out make your this. life a living hell. Pause. He really did, man. He got, How annoyed are you if you got ripped? Because he did. He got ripped for this. And then they're like, 
You're going in the muscle suit. You don't have to. He's actually. like, I haven't had bread in two years. Yeah. <laughs> they make it a running gag that he can't get the suit off, so he can't possibly show off his yeah. abs. Yeah. Yeah. Be yeah. mad. That'd be so mad. What do you think? Did uh, did he show up just like not buff enough? I or think it's a child's. It's it's supposed to be such an elevated childhood yeah. fantasy that I yeah. think it's just like they already have. And plus, they already have Superman. You already have yeah. the yeah. muscle guy in the muscle suit. Like Shazam is so much like, broader. Yeah. You're gonna have to go like Hogan, Ultimate Warrior in the '80s level. Yeah. No, steroids no, not even though. Give him whatever they suit. gave Chris Pratt. <laughs> <laughs> but even Pratt's not like Pratt was lanky. I mean, yeah. he was lean. Like Shazam, you gotta be like a you gotta be like a tank. All right, well, have uh, Batista give you some of his uh, oh, yeah. something on the DL or something like the Mar the Marvel guys. <laughs> They take that HGH to what the What are they going to do for the <laughs> Noah Centineo playing He-Man? That's what. That's who I'm worried about. He's got to have his shirt off. I don't know what, who's Noah Centineo. The, 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 he's from like all those like Netflix rock. He's like a little lanky 18-year-old kid who's going to yeah, play He-Man. He's a young dude, though. He can put on the muscle mask. I don't know, right? man. This or, is or, until like dude 22 or, 20, or he plays three. Adam, <laughs> and then Adam sh just shazams into some bodybuilder, and then they dub his voice into the there bodybuilder, and like that'll that. be a great movie. He was to There's all the no boys I've bad. loved before. That was the oh. big Netflix one he was in. That's that guy from You could beef him up. Yeah, <laughs> I, guess I, because, I guess because animation was so cheap in the 80s, but that's what I never got about He-Man and Prince Adam was, uh, you know, he was still a bodybuilder and he was Prince Adam. He should have been like a really lanky dude. Yes. Mm. But the well, problem no. is, it's it, that's an extra character you have to animate. Because it's and a, an extra action figure you no, have to make. It's because it's about, yeah, I guess they made that it's about yeah. toxic masculinity, Dan, uh -huh. because everyone in Eternia was like, there's no way our champion would wear that pink and, or purple t-shirt. Tunic. <laughs> I'm just saying, there's not even a costume. It's he's He Man. He just walks he's around got, as He Man got, all like, the time. Straps. That's He Man wearing a pink shirt. Uh, You're right. On. It's got like, like fuzzy underwear and straps. He has the same bowl cut. Like, yeah. It stretches credibility more than Superman. Uh, I, I, it's because it's it's like the David S. Sandberg thing. I'm sure there are many uh, hours of philosophy as to why that is. Because they would run on the same looped background every episode. Yeah. yeah. But uh, still, it's not that hard. In my head, Ken, it's just when He Man pops. His shirt off. There's no way you're looking in his eyes. Like you don't. You, <laughs> you're you, just lost. I just lost it. Lost in the pack. I yes. respect oblique. He Man for who he is. <laughs> so I will look He Man in the eyes. If you ever met He Man, you would look him in the eye. <laughs> look He Man in the eyes. He has the power. He has earned, earned your respect. <laughs> his power is in here. I don't judge He Man's <laughs> power by his pecs. <laughs> Everyone else did. Look man in the, eyes. <laughs> the real power was his mind. Right. Let's keep watching Shazam. <laughs> we could talk about this more then. Did you roll in a styrofoam muscle suit? No, not terrorizing the bullies who make your life a living hell. I'm talking about a kid's ultimate power fantasy. Developing a moderate <laughs> YouTube following. Do also it the means, plot of baby. a Smash that like button. Yeah. Shazam! Starring You're a Wizard Billy. The movie trying to write the star section for us. Thunder, crap, Captain Sparkle, Power Void, Maximum. Is this going to be in the Four final cut? No. Mr. Okay, Philadelphia, good. Human Power Storm, Frequency Flinger, Sir Zapsalot. Yeah, not so easy, is it, kid? Uh, pause. Uh, shout out to Z Jack Dylan Grazer. Yeah. That kid's he's funny. Great. Yeah. He's great. In, oh, yeah. He's great in this movie. Yeah. This is a great kid performance. Yeah. It's like, he's, he's, he's a lot of the energy that keeps the movie sort of going. Why, why didn't the staff call that kid? He's well, great. He's, yeah, but he's not. You know, he'd no. be, uh, he the power would not. He would go to his head. Yeah, that's he true. had to learn not to be quite a punk. That's fair. That's yeah, I also fair. like that they kind of made it like a, <laughs> a, a emotional beat between the two of them. That like uh, Billy was like, "You're just jealous." It's like, no shit, that kid is jealous <laughs> of being yeah. a flying yeah. superhero. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yes, he's jealous of yeah. you. That's actually that's you really should understand scene. that. I felt bad for Asher Angel in this movie because like Jack Dylan Grazer got to do like all the funny comic relief stuff mm. and Zachary. Levi got to do like all the like Whoa, I'm a superhero and like <laughs> fighting stuff and like Asher Angel just like he was really good but like he just had to be sad like that was his role yeah. it's like he got to be sad and then say Shazam and turn into a hero and it's like he was really good in the movie but like he just didn't get like the showy role he'll be yeah. fine his I name do. is Asher Angel <laughs> you have two career paths like boy model and boy actor <laughs> <laughs> the staff calls for all Asher Angels like Chris Angel's um, slightly less talented I do love the idea brother. though that like all these amazing things are happening on set and like there's explosions to his left and his right and this kid's like Shazam cut <laughs> All right, Asher, get off get set. Out of there. He's like, 
Okay. Zach's Fine. over there getting his muscle inflated. Like, hold like, on. Zachary is like, all right, how does this scene work out? It's like, okay, uh, Zachary Levi is going to fly around. Uh, the bullets are going to bounce off of him. It's going to be amazing. He's going to save this thing from a Ferris wheel. Uh, and then you get drowned. Uh, <laughs> and then you pop your head up out of the water and you say Shazam. And then Zachary Levi is going to come in and save the day. Cool? So you're just going to come in here and we're going to hold your head underwater for five minutes. <laughs> he knew what he and signed up take for. Mm -hmm. I have no sympathy for anyone named Asher Angel. But they, 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 they <laughs> got that's, to wear the bat suit at least. They know? got that name off Tiger Beat. <laughs> <laughs> or YM. Uh, all right, let's keep going. My favorite boy band, Asher Angel. Chief of Staff. See, oh. now that's how oh. it's done. He is nice. a villain. Jonathan. He came here to steal an eyeball from a wizard. I mean, wizard. <laughs> Bird Ward of the stage. <laughs> Terrible. Great Teen Titans Go. <laughs> Sorry. An uncomfortable amount of R. Kelly references. And we wrote that before <laughs> the latest. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Should be noted, this script's drafted before the recent Like a week before yes. the news broke. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, but still, a, never a good time to no, put a bunch no. of those. I mean, when the know. movie was in theaters and I saw it, and they say, I believe I can fly like four times, I was like, really? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I guys. think I can fly, or let's see if I can fly. Just yeah, only a little tweak. Yeah, never a borderline issue with us. It's just like, eh, should we? Like, no, we no, were pretty yeah, confident just, in that nope. even before. Yeah, yeah. That, that won't conjure any uncomfortable references. I don't right know. Now. No, just Angel, what's his face, just being like, it's a remix to Ignition! <laughs> like, what's happening in this movie? <laughs> Why are they all, what's going on? <laughs> How they, I like to have sex in the kitchen. Uh, <laughs> movie is the buttered rolls. Uh, what? That's a non sequitur. Uh, all right, keep going. Believe that you can fly. I believe I 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 can fly. Make a live action gargoyles movie, you cowards. Yeah. Can't be done with flossing now, please. Please. And <laughs> through the window, through the wall. I have a dated movie, music yeah. reference. Heck yeah. Shows us where. <laughs> I was amazed at how dated this reference was. We looked oh, it pause, up. Pause. Yeah, the sad thing is I said something like, what do you mean? It's only five years old. And then it was 2003. <laughs> so it was 2003. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> We've been cool. skating for a long time. Oh, my God. So, ooh, we are too old for the internet. Get us off of here. Dude, that is just replace us all with Asher Angel. <laughs> yeah. Like, the thing that Lil John is now like, Old man music, yeah. like it really is. Like that's like way too old for kids. Oh, grandpa's music. music. Yeah, yeah. We've been Sweat in our trip down my balls. Yeah. <laughs> We've been in our wizard cave, and <laughs> we need to, to lure see. some more boys to take the staff from us. The next generation of honest trailer writers have yet to come and claim the yes. staff. All so right. uh, we're gonna keep sitting on our empty stone thrones, throwing 2003 music yeah. references at you, and so you drag us out of this building uh, hey. by our cold, dead arms. Fair. Listen, Second I think bit. we've made at least one Old Town Road reference also. Yeah, yeah, so it all, right. balances so all balanced out. out. All balanced yeah, out. We're yeah. good for another 5 to 15 years. Right, we're very going. with it. Good job, Holtby, on this. Holtby. Oh, it's doing too much work. Sparky in Philadelphia. Okay, this is the second DC film with an Annabelle cameo, so The Conjuring definitely takes place in this universe. Quit teasing us with the cameos already, and then Aquaman punched the nun in the face! I'd watch to see that. Yeah, I would, yeah. yeah. I like John's indig indignant voice. Punch the nun in the face! Yeah, good performance by John. Punch that nun! Yeah. Let's see what wasn't funny enough <clears throat> to make it into that. <laughs> yes! Meet Billy Batson. A boy with the power oh. of being white. <laughs> yeah. Should have gone in. Save me any fries? <laughs> uh, Star it's, it's, it's like it's a funny joke, but I feel like it's it's you have to explain it. You have to explain what happened, where he stole the cop car sure, and yeah. the guy's lunch, and then the guy catches him, and instead yeah. of shooting him several times, as what you would expect a Philly cop to maybe. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyways, it's, it's it's too much. We've already explained. Too it's much. a lot of it's exactly. It's yeah. already not funny. Yeah. So there you go. The explanation of it. Yep. And uh, continue. Starring oh, yeah. Billy the Kid, yeah. Online U versus IRL U. Mm -hmm. Who? How can you possibly be mad about Ariel when they made Santa black? <laughs> Professional bad guy actor Mark Strong, yep. Kid Vicious. In West Philadelphia, scorn and craze. We did, we did that, that for class. And subscribe from posting OC to post OC. Foster's Home for Super Friends. They're not all ones. The CW no, spinoff series. Sometimes you just throw stuff out, guys. Spooky <laughs> Muppets. Call you by my name. <laughs> All right. That, 
I really like that see. one. There's more. Uh, Batson yeah. begins. <laughs> Foster the sure, super sure. people. Mm -hmm. Boys mm -hmm. to man. This takes no time. Mm -hmm. yeah. You'll see, we didn't even give these to Robert. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, go. Call You By My Name, also That's my a favorite. That was between those two. It does require yeah. some explanation, though, because yeah. it's like you're using the name of the wizard to it, invoke yeah, Shazam. You, you become a hero who's named after the wizard who granted you it's, the powers. Yeah, yeah which yeah. is weird. It also makes for weird wikipedia -ing. You have to be like, Shazam, parentheses, wizard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wizard. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I hope uh, if you're new to the show by now, you see why... Uh, they're deleted and why they're not in the trailer because there's not much to say about them. Not that pure funny. gold. Yeah. Listen, yeah. everything. No, 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 it's not. Uh, but I'm glad you guys got to see that. Um, anything else about Shazam before we tease next week? I thought this I was a delight. I, yeah, I really, I really like this one. I, I'm hoping that DC does more like this. Like, just take the character on its own terms. Think about what kind of genre and presentation would work best for that character, and not worry about how they're going to interconnect. Although it is too bad because, like, I would watch a Shazam Superman team up or Shazam and Batman. Sure. And I found myself uh, uh, getting very excited when he was like, "I called someone else for lunch," yeah. and I was like, <clears throat> "They did it! They're gonna!" And then it was like the the head no. cut off shot, and I was yeah. very actually very disappointed because. Yeah. Yeah, one Cavill there. Yeah. It really, it, it made me really want Cavill there. Cavill, yeah. good Superman, and yeah. uh, it would have been really fun to see him in this. Definitely. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the honest trailer commentary for Shazam, and I hope you'll join us next actual Wednesday, where we will actually be responding to what you have to say about next week's honest trailer, mm -hmm. which I believe will be, um, uh, you know, someone coming back. Uh, it'll be the return of an old favorite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there you go. Definitely. That's your clue. And uh, thanks again for watching. We'll see you then. Bye bye.